Hi, my name is Vinay and uh, in this video we will see the demonstration of a two-stage op-amp uh, designed using Macromen 3.8 version software. <coughs> so this is uh, by default opening of my Microsoft and 14 nanometer technology. So we have seen the scamping simulation of two-stage op-amp okay, where I have used the PMOS current mirrors for the gain stage and the output is on the final stage from PO and nano. And these are the sizes of the transistors. And I have worked on 90 nanometer technology. So the same I will do over in Microwind layout. So to change the technology, you have to go to file, say select foundry, and set the technology to 90 nanometer. So on the bottom side, you can see and confirm that this is working on 90 nanometer technology. And uh, I made the OPAM layout already so that uh, we just quickly use it. So there you are. So this is the layout of the op-amp. So this is, you can see that this is a Bison circuit and uh, there is a PMOS current mirror over here and another one over here. This is the output stage PMOS and uh, current mirror. And this one, the output stage PMOS and NMOS transistor are having a high width so that the output input is lower and uh, the, 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 the gain is better. Okay, so in this schematic you have seen it's the same I have labeled the transistors etc on the same one so that you can identify which one is PB and B and B2, P2, P3 and PU output stage, PMOS and MOS. Okay. So let's see the simulation of it. Okay, so this is the transient response. So first of all, let's go to the, the DC analysis. So in voltage versus voltage curve, you can set to ask him to show the, the crossover. So you can see the crossover is 0.565 volt. Ideally, it should have been 0.6 volt because the VDD is at 1.2. So it should have been 0.6 volt, but due to a little bit of disparities in the size of the transistors, we are getting at 0.565. Uh, nevertheless, it's good enough. And then you can see the slope. So the slope is minus 20, so that means this is an inverting uh, gain of around 20. So that's good enough. So now we can verify this by going in the V minus, okay? And I can set the offset as 0.565, okay? And uh, maybe change the frequency to 500. Amplitude, I can give maybe 0.1 instead of that, 0.05, okay? Yeah, that's good enough. And simulate. There you are. So this guy works quite seamless. And you can ask him to show the min max of uh, B minus. So thereby you see that uh, the deviation is around 0.1 volt. Okay. So because 0.50 millivolt, so you get 100 millivolt the swing. Okay. Now I ask him to show for V out. See what it comes. So it's coming around 0.6, okay. So that is what the swing of the output gain. So we can calculate the gain by dividing this uh, 0.58 by 0.1. So that is what the gain we will get, okay. Then let's check with some other inputs. So I just go and reduce the amplitude further. So I just make it 10 millivolt and see how does the response. So yes, this guy amplifies and the values are coming neat and nice. Okay. So here you can see that the swing is quite less, but the amplitude is also quite less in the, at the input side. So I'll make it back to nearly 0.1. Yeah. So the swing is quite high now. So it's almost like one volt. Okay. And for the input side, Okay, maybe one more cycle. So the swing is 0 0.97 and for V minus it's uh, 0 0.2. Okay, so that is what we are getting, and uh, you can see the frequency versus time response also. So here I'm not oscillating the frequency, that's why you see a straight line. So for AC, you have to apply an input like that way. So maybe I just increase the step size. Yeah, so this goes faster. And uh, 
Now just ask him to increase the frequency by a factor of 10. Okay, and assign it. Or maybe 20 so that we see a long range. So here you can identify this. I just reset this for the purpose values and uh, oh, without the delays. Yeah. So thereby we can identify that at what frequency the oscillations uh, stops. I mean the amplitude stops. So that will be our gain range. So we can just go to voltage versus time, frequency versus time simulation and see when the gain starts dropping. So almost like around 3 gigahertz onwards, the gain starts dropping significantly. So that will be our bandwidth. Okay. Now let's see, uh, this was the inverting response and let's see non-inverting one. So for that, you can just V minus. So this you can set it back to V minus and set it to 0.6 volt. And at the V plus, you can go to sinus under tap and uh, make it again 15 V volt. So that's a small one. And uh, same frequency and uh, same offset. Let's simulate this. So if you see the voltage versus time simulation, I increase the step size so that we see a faster simulation run. First of all, let's see the voltage versus voltage curve. So you can see that it's going from zero to half. So that means this is non-inverting, and the gain is almost like six. And we see the crossover. The crossover this time is 0 0.64 for the plus input. So let's set according to that one. So 0.64, and there you are. So this is almost in sync with this one. Okay. And gentlemen, this is all about OPAM. You can again see the frequency versus time response by applying a varying frequency to it and see the uh, calculate the unity in bandwidth. You can all see the current consumption over here. Okay. And calculate the gain according to the plots. So gentlemen, this is about Dota. Thank you very much.